Shoot all the bluebirds you can if you can hit them, but remember, it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. That's one of the famous quotes from the classic film, To Kill a Mockingbird. This film will be celebrating its 50th anniversary and will be playing on the big screen where it, of course, belongs this week. Cheryl, thank you for being back on the show with me today. Oh, well, thank <laughs> you for having me, Jenna. I, I really love coming to talk about movies with you. Mm -hmm. And this movie may be my favorite movie of all times. Mine too, I have to admit that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I watched it, I had, I was required in junior high to watch the film and read the book and I'll never forget it. It, it is a classic film. Well, it's a wonderful film and it's a heartwarming film. It's won all kind of awards. Uh, uh, the American Film Institute picked it as the best courtroom drama ever. Uh, they picked it as the number two most inspiring movie, second only to It's uh, A Wonderful Life. And uh, uh, Gregory Peck's role was as the lawyer Atticus Finch. And that character, Atticus Finch, has pick, been picked by the American Film Institute as the greatest hero of the last 50 years in, mm -hmm. in movies. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, really, it's really a wonderful movie. It's, it's uh, based on a Pulitzer Prize winning book by Harper Lee. Uh, she grew up in a small town in Alabama, Monroeville. And uh, she based her book actually on her father, her real father, who was a lawyer. And her mother's maiden name was Finch, and her father's uh, first name started with an A, so Atticus Finch is sort of a, a close approximation. And she was sort of inspired by a courtroom case her father had uh, defending someone, and also the famous Scottsboro Boys case where nine young black men were accused of rape and were kind of railroaded, it was felt. And so she wrote this book about, uh, about uh, racial intolerance, about uh, moral integrity, about coming of age. And she told it from the viewpoint of a little girl, uh, a little girl called Scout, mm -hmm. uh, who is viewing it through her own eyes uh, with her brother and her uh, next door neighbor, uh, a little kid named Dill. And it happened that uh, Harper Lee grew up in the same small town with Truman Capote, the famous author. And uh, Truman Capote is the basis for the little kid deal in the movie and in the book. And uh, she later helped uh, Truman Capote research his book In Cold Blood. And then she went off and wrote her book, which won the Pulitzer Prize, and was her only great book. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but she was happy with that. And uh, then they along came and made a movie. And they offered the role of Atticus uh, to, believe it or not, Rock Hudson. Mm -hmm. uh, they offered it to Jimmy Stewart, but Jimmy was kind of a right winger and he felt the movie was too liberal and he turned it down. And they gave it to Gregory Peck. And Harper Lee said the first time she saw him, she thought, he's not right for this. And then she saw him on set in costume and she said, that's Atticus. Mm -hmm. And he reminded her so much of her father that when her father died, she gave him her father's watch. Really? And when he won the Academy Award for his portrayal, mm -hmm. he had the watch with him. Oh, that's neat. That's and uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful movie. Uh, uh, it uh, uh, was done in 1962 by Robert Mulligan. And uh, the town in the movie uh, is not quite the same town. Uh, it looks very much like the hometown that Harper Lee grew up in. But she said she always intended it not to be her hometown, but to be any small town. Yeah. And Gregory Peck, even in an introduction to the book, wrote that it reminded him so much of the little town he grew up in California. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of an everyman film that we all okay. can kind of identify with it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Robert Duvall's first film. He played uh, Boo Radley, the uh, strange, mysterious guardian angel mm -hmm. uh, down the street who watched over the kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brock Peters played the man that, uh, that Gregory Peck was defending in the courtroom. And they became friends ever after, and the little girl who played Scout, Mary Batum, uh, she and Brock Peters became lifelong friends. And in fact, when Gregory Peck died, Brock Peters delivered his eulogy. Really? And in the eulogy, he quoted Harper Lee saying that, that uh, uh, Atticus Finch gave Gregory Peck an opportunity to play himself. Mm -hmm. Because he was very much like that, a man mm -hmm. of great integrity and, mm -hmm. and upstanding. And it comes through in the film, and, and we, we come away from the film feeling really good about somebody standing up for what's right, even when mm -hmm. it's unpopular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, to see this film on the big screen, wow. Uh -huh. you know? Cause this is, well, they're doing this for the first time because it's the 50th anniversary. Right, it's at the Regal Theater, and it's one of those uh, Turner Classic uh, movie productions mm -hmm. uh, where it's one night only, uh, and uh, it's, it's always fun to go see these old movies that you've seen a million times often on television or DVDs on television, 
but to go in and watch it remastered and right. on the big screen and right up there the way it was meant to be seen mm -hmm. is just inspiring. It is. And Cheryl, do you remember the first time that you saw the movie? I, like you, probably read the book in school mm -hmm. and uh, uh, loved it. Uh, read it again in college, I remember specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I uh, uh, went to see the movie when it came out in the theater, so that's mm -hmm. when I first saw it uh, mm -hmm. back in 1962. Okay. But I've seen it many, 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 many times before on television. But I think that first time is the only time I've ever seen it on the big screen. Mm -hmm. So. I, I want to go back and see it again. Yeah, there's nothing like seeing it on the big screen as opposed to the television screen. Don't you feel that each time you watch the movie, it just gets better, too? Oh, it does. It, it, it's a movie that, that you're comfortable with. It. It, mm -hmm. it's, you don't get tired of it. It's, it's something you find something uh, inside you each time you watch it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm going to go see it. My wife and I are going to go see it on Thursday night. Are you going to come with us? Yes, I will be there because okay. I can't miss this movie. <laughs> My eighth grade English teacher would be very proud of me if he found out I was going to see it she again. She would be. <laughs> and it is a great book. Mm -hmm. It is a great book. And uh, What do you think is better, Cheryl, the book or the movie? Well, you know, it's always a hard argument because they're different mediums. But mm -hmm. this is one where while there are differences between the book and the movie, it's enough compatible and the same that the movie really brings the book to life. Mm -hmm. But the book, of course, as any book does, goes into much more detail and much more motivation and inner thought and stuff like that. So I, I, would, I would certainly read the book. It's one mm -hmm. of the best reads you'll ever do, mm -hmm. too. Wonderful. All right, well, hopefully everybody can see it this Thursday night. Cheryl, thank you for being back on the show. Well, great. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. Don't go away.